Hey, friends all over the world. I want to give you a warning, a very serious warning, about the rise of Jezebel and Ahab. The rise of Jezebel and Ahab. I feel this so strongly in my spirit that I need to warn you today. And I would encourage you to take heed. The rise of Jezebel and Ahab. We are living in a season, hear me, of the proliferation of the spirit of Jezebel and the spirit of Ahab. And for the record, for the record, you say, well, what do you mean by the spirit of Jezebel? The appearance of Jezebel comes in 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 31. Jezebel is the daughter of Ethbal. He was the king of the Zidonians. He was actually, historians believe that he was actually a high priest of Baal. Baal, B-A-L-L. Baal, uh, one of the Phoenician gods that was venerated as the Lord of the Harvest or the God of Thunder. There are many variations of Baal in history. Uh, the the Yorubas would call him Shango. Uh, they would, the Greeks called him Zeus, but it's, it's the same kind of spirit. He was seen as, uh, the Lord of the harvest. And so Jezebel is the agent or the emissary of Baal. And she was sent to Israel on a demonic assignment to marry King Ahab, who was the king of Israel at the time. And as she married him, she introduced Baal worship into Israel. And so she is a false prophetess. She is an idolater or an idolatress. The Bible talks about her in the book of Revelation. I believe it's Revelation, the third chapter or the fourth chapter talks about, and thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. He says, the church in Thyatira, to the church in Thyatira, right? I have this against you. You suffer that woman Jezebel to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication or immorality and to eat things offered unto idols. Now, before I go further with this warning, I want you to understand that when we talk about Jezebel, we are not just talking about a gender. We're not just talking about a woman. We're not just talking about uh, uh, something that demonizes women because i think for many many years when we begin to hear this stuff about jezebel it's like we begin to pull the trigger and and shoot at with with words and accusations any woman who was strong any woman who was bold any woman who was outspoken was accused of being a jezebel and that's not what this message is about this is not about vilifying women and accusing strong women of being jezebels jezebel has nothing to do with being a strong woman Jezebel has nothing to do with being a strong woman. In fact, Jezebel is not even a woman. Jezebel is a spirit. Why does the writer of the book of Revelation refer to her and personifies her, even though she died thousands of years prior to the writing of the book of Revelation? It's because he's not talking about a woman. He's talking about a spirit. There is a spirit of Jezebel. And anybody who claims there's no spirit of Jezebel, I can assure you, has a Jezebel spirit. Anybody that says there's no such thing as a Jezebel spirit is actually operating in the spirit of Jezebel. But anyway, I want to give you this warning about the rise of Jezebel and Ahab. You must understand that wherever there's a Jezebel, there's always an Ahab. Whenever there's a Jezebel, there's always an Ahab. In fact, if I could put it this way, Jezebel represents manipulation, control, and intimidation. She represents manipulation, control, and intimidation. Ahab represents the enabler. Ahab is the enabler. Wherever there is a Jezebel, there has to be someone who allows her to operate. There has to be someone who enables her. There has to be someone who aids and abets her. <clears throat> And he says that this spirit teaches and seduces. Now, why am I making this video talking about the rise of Jezebel? The Lord is warning the house of God 
about the proliferation of Jezebel. Because wherever there is a genuine move of God, wherever there is a true prophetic anointing, wherever there is an apostolic anointing, Jezebel will show up to subvert the work of God in that place. They are false prophetesses and false prophets. They claim to hear God, but they do not speak for God. They speak for Baal. They are not a prophet of God or a prophetess of God. They are not a prophetess of the Most High. They speak for Baal. They speak under the influence of a demonic spirit. They speak under the influence of demon spirits. The Bible talks about this in 1 Timothy chapter 4. Now, now the spirit speaketh it's expressive that in the last days, uh, perilous times shall come. Oh, no, it says that, um, that, um, that men will give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, demonic doctrines. Let me give an example. When I first started pastoring, I can remember that there would be a woman that would come and say, Hey, my husband is not serving God. And, you know, I, we just need to pray for him. Uh, we need to, to encourage him. Could you, could you speak into his life? You know, he just needs to know God more. I've been praying for him to know the Lord. Could you mentor him? And listen to this. The moment I would mentor the husband, the woman would manifest and tell the husband, why are you going to church all the time? Why are you under that pastor? That pastor is operating in witchcraft. You know why? Because that's a Jezebel. Jezebel loves control. She doesn't mind her husband not being saved as long as she can control him. And the moment he begins to surrender to the Lord, she gets nervous. She gets frustrated. She gets anxious. Why? Because she knows she can no longer control him. When he was selling drugs and, and philandering with women, she could control him. Even though he was doing wrong, she knew what he was doing. She knew where he was going. She knew he was going to Latasha's house. He knew he was going to Tanya's apartment. And if your name is Latasha or Tanya, I'm not talking about you. I'm giving an example. But so she was not intimidated or threatened by him. But the moment he begins to serve God for real, the demon inside of her, of Jezebel, begins to manifest. And so I'm telling you, I've seen this time after time after time. That Jezebelic spirit of manipulation and control that tries to subvert the order of God. It Listen, Jezebel hates order. Write that down. She hates order. She doesn't like rules. That demon does not like order. It doesn't like rules. She thrives in chaos. And this is why the moment you begin to put your life in order, the moment you begin to put the church in order, the moment you begin to put the ministry in order, Jezebel will have an upheaval. She will throw a hissy fit. She's angry. She'll begin to accuse. She'll begin to slander. She'll begin to uh, speak out false accusations. She'll begin to, she'll begin to give false prophecies. Write that down. Write that down. Jezebel is a false prophetess. So the spirit of Jezebel is connected to false prophecy. And we have a lot of Jezebelic prophets today. Guys that are operating in a spirit of divination, men and women who are speaking lies in hypocrisy. They are, they are, they are espousing extra biblical revelation, which is contrary to the Bible. They are teaching damnable heresies and they're giving you false words. And they're telling, oh, I see your mailbox. I, is, is there a Jasmine? Man, I, is, is your mailbox number 222? You're like, yes, Papa, yes, yes. But you don't realize that that's a Jezebel spirit. They hate the word of God. The word of God is not good enough. It's antiquated. It's outdated. And you know why? The reason why the word of God is antiquated and outdated to them is because when you begin to speak the word, you expose Jezebel. I've seen Jezebelic husbands and Ahab husbands. The minute the wife starts saying, you know, I want to surrender to God and be the woman that I'm called to be, he begins to throw up. Hey, friends, they cut my video off. I'm telling you, I'm in the vein. The devil don't want you to hear what I'm trying to tell you because some of y'all are going to get made free today. They cut my video off. Watch both videos. Watch the first one and this one. 
Watch the first one and this one, back to back. They cut off my video because they're terrified of what I'm saying. Beware of the rise of Jezebel and Ahab. Beware of the rise of Jezebel and Ahab. Study 1 Kings chapter 16, beginning with verse 31, and you will see who Jezebel is. Ahab was the king of Israel. Jezebel was the queen of Israel through marriage. And so this spirit is a spirit of manipulation, control, seduction, and divination. It's a spirit of manipulation, control, seduction, and divination. The spirit of Jezebel is a spirit that manipulates and controls. A spirit that tries to draw people away from God. Draw people away from God. And I'm telling you, beware, be warned. Because this spirit is raging. It's raging in the culture. Y'all don't want to hear this. It's raging in the culture. And the enemy wants it to rage in the church. And many leaders, unbeknownst to them, have actually given permission to this spirit to operate. They suffered Jezebel to teach and to seduce. Hear this by the Holy Ghost. And God says it's time for the overthrow of Jezebel. There's a Jehu anointing coming on the body of Christ that will overthrow this spirit, that will not tolerate this spirit, that will cast her down, that will come with fiery rebuke. And so I was saying that many times this spirit shows up in the form of false prophecy. See, the Jezebel spirit does not like God-ordained authority. She hates authority. She hates submitting to godly authority. She hates male authority. Even though the Jezebel spirit is not just female, it's gender neutral, but that spirit hates godly ordained authority. The minute you correct her, she hates you. The minute you rebuke her, you become a demon. You become a false prophet. The minute you, you tell her that what she's doing is wrong, she hates your good. i never forget one time there was a lady in my church, and I rebuked her because what she was doing was wrong. She was undermining her husband's authority. She was causing him, after asking me to help him to be a stronger man of God, and when I began to mentor him, and I began to pray over him, and I began to speak into his life, the minute I began to do that, she manifested. And she began to accuse me of being a witch and a warlock. Now, I was her best friend when she could control her husband. I was her best friend when, when he was doing everything she wanted him to do. But when I corrected her, when I told her that, no, you're out of order and what you're doing is incorrect, you need to submit, wife, submit to your own husband, all oh, that demon manifested. And here's how it manifests. Jezebel always comes through a spirit of false prophecy. Write that down. She's a false prophetess. She is a false prophetess. She speaks lies in the name of God. But the God she worships is not the God of heaven, not the God of the Bible. She worships Baal. The word Jezebel actually etymologically means the wife or she that is espoused to Baal. Jezebel means she that is espoused to Baal. She is the wife. She is the spiritual wife of Baal. It's like you have Baal and Ashtaroth. So Jezebel is a spirit that actually draws people away from God, Jehovah, and draws them to Baal, who is a perverse God, a God of perversion. Jezebel is narcissistic. She's a gaslighter. She never takes responsibility for her wrongdoing. She will never repent. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, I suffered that woman. I gave her space to repent of her evil deeds and she would not. Jezebel won't repent. She will never acknowledge wrong. And ladies, let me tell you something. If you're a wife and you never acknowledge wrongdoing, even when you're dead wrong, 
even when you're caught with the cookies in your mouth, even when you're caught cheating and caught with the text messages and you won't acknowledge wrongdoing, instead you gaslight and you say, you know what? Well, the reason I cheated is because you just didn't, you didn't buy me those thongs that I wanted. And that's why I went out to Larry Cahit. You were Jezebel. You need to repent or you're going to bust hell wide open. I promise you, you are not operating in the spirit of God. Jezebel, Jezebel is a spirit of intimidation. Now, let me tell you something. Jezebel is not just women. It's also men. A man can operate in the Jezebel spirit. Hear this. Don't miss, see, see, because there's some Jezebels on this feed. And what they're going to do is while I'm talking, they're going to try to sow confusion because they don't want to be exposed. But we coming for you. We're coming for your nappy head behind. You foul, buck tooth spirit of Jezebel. And so what's happening is this spirit is one of the most diabolical spirits in the church. She works with Ahab. Now hear this. I said before in my previous video, wherever there's a Jezebel, there's an Ahab. There's always an enabler. Anytime you see a manipulative person, person who is manipulative, a person who is is who operates in manipulation, there is always someone in that person's life, a cohort that enables their manipulation. And this is why you got to be careful, especially when you are a pastor and you're trying to give counsel to husband and wife, because usually if the, if the wife's a Jezebel, the husband's an Ahab or vice versa. The wife can be an Ahab and the husband can be a Jezebel. <laughs> but this spirit operates through enablement. It needs enablement. It needs someone to empower its platform. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so, and so hear this by the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you that this spirit has been raging and this spirit has been loosed in this season. They'll come, man. The Lord sent me here as a prophetess to the nations. The Lord sent me here to help you. I'm, I'm hearing an assignment from God and they offer spirituality with no basis. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost on this broadcast. They will tell you how, man, God sent me. I'm a prophetess. I'm a Deborah. You know, I have a mantle on my life. I'm this, I'm that. You know, I'm, a, I'm an Elijah. They will make all these claims about who they are, but they usually have no roots and no fruit. Write that down. Jezebel has no roots and no fruit. The only reason she can function is through her attachment to legitimate authority. She has no authority by herself. She has no legitimate authority. The only way Jezebel can function, and again, by Jezebel, I'm talking gender neutral, male and female. The only way Jezebel can function is by attaching itself to legitimate authority. Many years ago, when I first started ministry, I remember when uh, we were meeting in a hotel room and this gentleman came to the church. And he, man, he was, he was speaking in tongues. He was worshiping. He says, I'm just a missionary passing through and the Lord, you know, is doing a work and I feel the spirit of God in this place. He said all this great stuff about the church. And then I noticed on the first day he came to the church, he began to prophesy over my wife, began to give her words, took her to a corner, which is inappropriate and began to prophesy. I got a word for you, woman of God. And God says this and God says that without my permission, not only am I her pastor, I'm her husband. And he did not seek permission before he gave her a word. See, Jezebel is out of order. Jezebel's out of order. And so, so he comes and he begins to say, Oh, man of God, you have a great work. I love your ministry. Man, this is amazing church, etc. He began to flatter me. That's another thing Jezebel does. She flatters. She speaks smooth words, but they're false. And so he says, oh, you have an amazing church. Da -da 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 -da. And he says, man, I, I'm, I'm a missionary and God has trained me in, in, in ministry. He says, you know, I would really love to help you. I really want to help you because I'm very well trained in discipleship. You don't have training in that area. I can see that, but I can... I can help you. And then once one Tuesday night, we were having a Bible study. He began to take over the Bible study. He began to ca contradict what I was teaching from the Bible. And said, no, that's not it. And this, and begin, he had a takeover spirit. And I took him to the side and I said, listen, 
I said, listen, let me explain something to you. I said, um, who sent you here? He said, what do you mean? I said, who sent you? He says, well, no, I'm just from, I said, no, who sent you? Are you from a church? Have you been ordained? Where do you come from? And he said, he said um, to me, he says, well, I could start my own church, but I would much rather connect with somebody that already has something going. I would rather connect with someone that already has something going. And, um, you know, and, and you don't know anything about discipleship. I got a degree from Oral Roberts. I'm this, I'm that. I'm anointed. You need me. And I said, listen, with all due respect, you have two choices. You can either join the church and submit to my leadership or you can get up out of here. You, you choose. And he says, well, I, I, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't need to submit to you or your vision. I have my own vision. So you see, Jezebel sows division and strife. It's a spirit of division. She divided Israel. She divided Israel. There was a remnant in Israel that worshiped Jehovah. And then there was a large portion of Israel that worshiped Jezebel. I mean, worshiped Baal. And so we need discernment in this hour like never before. We need discernment in this hour because these spirits, these twins, Jezebel and Ahab, they work together. They work in tandem. They work in concert, but they are diabolical and they are nefarious and they have been sent to destroy ministries, to destroy businesses, to destroy families, to destroy outreaches, to destroy the work of God in territories, in regions, in cities. And so what you got to do, what you got to do is you have to understand and you have to discern the operation of that spirit. Because if you don't discern the operation of that spirit, you will begin to come under its seduction. You will begin to come under its seduction and its influence. You'll come under the seduction and the influence of Jezebel. She claims to be a teacher. But her teachings are seductive. And I want to say this real quick before I close this out. That, that's why I'm going to close this out. I'm going to close this out. I'm going to close this out. The spirit of false prophecy is at an all-time high. Study 1 John chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they be of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. The spirit of Jezebel is a spirit of false prophecy. And there is a proliferation of false prophecy in our generation like never before. I see them every day on social media. I see them every day, every day on YouTube. And what they're doing, they're seductive, they're manipulative. They draw people away from God and they draw people to themselves. I've seen it so many times. So I want you to think of Jezebel like this, like good cop, bad cop. You, you know, you know, good cop, bad cop. When, when, when the police are trying to indict someone or incriminate someone, they will play this game called good cop, bad cop. And so one officer comes in and he's throwing stuff around. He's cussing, he's fussing, and he's, he's going back and forth. And then the other cop comes in and brings a cup of coffee and says, I'm sorry for my partner. He, he, he's just really upset. We just trying to crack this cake case they're both working together they're both working together but they pretend on the outside to be working against each other that's how the spirit of jezebel works oh man my husband is this and that i'll never forget i was in a healing session and the woman came down for prayer i'm talking about the spirit of jezebel a woman came down for prayer and she says man of god could you pray for my husband I just, I've been really praying for his salvation. I've been really praying for him to get saved and, and to know the Lord and, 
And I just, I'm just standing in the gap and she sounds so spiritual. She sounds like she loved Jesus and she's the chiefest of intercessors. And I say to her, you are a lie. She says, what do you mean? I said, don't you lie to a man of God. Don't you dare lie to me. I said, tell the truth. And she said, you're right. I hate his guts. I want him to die. Oh, I want him to die so bad. I'm so bitter. I hate him. You see, the reality is the spirit in her was operating in manipulation. She wanted to be perceived as this spiritual wife, as this wonderful person who loves Jesus and who is, is an intercessor. But in reality, she was operating in a Jezebel spirit. She was operating in bitterness. She was operating in a spirit of bitterness, a spirit of resentment, a spirit of anger. See, what I have seen in the church time and time again are people who pretend to be spiritual. Oh, God sent me here and God sent me on an assignment and the Lord told me I'm supposed to serve in this ministry. Da, 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 da. And the minute they don't get what they want, the minute they get corrected or rebuked, or the minute you say something to them that doesn't align with their agenda, that's the minute they cut up and act a fool. That's the minute they bring out the accusations. That's the minute they call you a warlock and a witch and this place is full of witchcraft. Now, why wasn't it full of witchcraft when you were able to speak on the microphone? Why wasn't it full of witchcraft when you had a position in the church? Why didn't your discernment see anything wrong with the church as long as you were being acknowledged? Why weren't, why wasn't it a witchcraft church when the preacher agreed with you? It's a witchcraft church because your witchcraft won't work there. Lord have mercy. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. It's a witchcraft church to the Jezebel because her witchcraft won't work there. Yeah, that's what they're trying to say. When a person does that, what they're saying is that my spells won't work here. My manipulation won't work here. I can't get what I want here. You you won't you won't submit to me here. A a person coming to a church and saying they're a prophetess or a prophet with a word that I'm supposed to submit to, we don't know you from Adam. We don't know anything about you. We don't know whether you beat your wife or not. We don't know whether you pay your taxes or or come on, whether you have insurance on your car, whether you have a job, whether you just got out of a mental institution. And you expect me, a pastor who God has set over this house and established a work that is actually thriving. I'm supposed to listen to you. Some vagabond that comes from nowhere. I'm supposed to submit to you. And pastors, they're coming. They will come. They will come. And I'm telling you. They will come with smooth speech. They will come with great stories. They will talk about how they are this and that. Do me a favor, y'all. Can y'all start inspecting people's fruit? Can y'all please start expecting people's fruit? Just because somebody tell you that they're a lawyer. Can I see your bar association certificate? Come on, somebody. We just let anybody, y'all let anybody speak into your life. Any jigaboo you find on the side of the road can give you a word and you sitting up there listening and they're defecating on your mind. They're urinating on your spirit and you sitting there because you're so desperate for attention and so desperate to feel special that you'll let anybody. It's like a woman that don't value herself. She'll let any raggedy come on Jimbo come and talk to her. You don't even ask questions. Are you married? Do you have kids? You don't even care. You sleep with them on the first date. That's a woman that doesn't respect herself. And we got Christians who have no respect for their spiritual life. Christians that have no appreciation for process. They don't have any regard for discernment. And they let anything and anyone speak over them. You will run across the country to hear a word from a so-called prophet and won't even open your Bible won't even read the gospel of John and you won't profit so-and-so to give you a word. This is why this spirit has been having such a stronghold over people lately. And it works with the agreement of Ahab. 
Wherever there's a Jezebel, there's an Ahab. And again, I want to say this and say it clear. Jezebel is gender neutral. She's not just a woman. She's not just a man. It's a spirit. It's gender neutral. It can work through a woman or it can work through a man. Doesn't matter who it is. Ahab can work through a woman and work through a man. Who is Ahab? Ahab is the passive personality type. He's the permissive personality type. He lets everything go. Well, that, I, okay, that's fine. He's docile. Jezebel's love Ahab's. Some of y'all sisters love husbands you can control. You love men that you can boss around. Some of you men love women that, that will be your doormat, that you can step all over. You love those kind of women. And I'm telling you, that is a telltale sign that a Jezebel spirit is operating. They are drawn to people they can control. They are drawn to people, come on somebody, that are submissive to their wiles. One time a person told me, oh man, I got this person that speaks into my life. He's a powerful man of God. And, and, and when I saw him, I said, what, who is this? Who is this homosexual guy that you're talking about? And I'm not being hateful, but I'm telling you, I'm saying, who is this guy? They, they touted him as this spiritual guru, and I knew that he had a whole bunch of problems. And that was the man speaking into their lives. And the reason why some of you can't come under authority to a legitimate man and woman of God is because Jezebel is your pastor. The reason why some of you can't get a good pastor and, and connect to a good church Jezebel is still your pastor. She's still your prophetess. She's still speaking in your life. I can't tell you how many times that people have not been able to see the destiny of God revealed or manifested in their lives because they can't connect to the body God sends them to because you got this, oh, what, this woman, she's my spiritual mother. She's my spirit. Who is that? Who is that person? Have you legitimized them? Who is that person that is speaking into your life? Who is that person that you've given that kind of authority over you, and yet that person has not been legitimized by God? You may legitimize them, but God has illegitimized them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so we need to be aware. We need to walk in discernment. How do we fight this? We got to have a Jehu anointing. There has to be a love for the word. A love for the word of God. And there has to be, listen to this, a love for holiness. Share this video.